Good evening. I would like to thank all of you for finding time in your busy schedules to make it out here so I don't have to give a speech to an empty room. The election in November will present you with a choice between two candidates with different visions for the future of our district and will allow you to choose what direction we will head in. For the past four years, I have been dedicated to serving you and your fellow constituents in Congress and have ensured that your voices are heard. But my devotion to serving the public extends much farther back than just my two terms in Congress. Before I was elected to office, I taught high school in the Rialto Unified School District because it was my belief that investing in a young adult education is the pathway to a more prosperous future for our communities and our nation as a whole. Not only did I get to see firsthand the issues that plague our public school system, but my years as a teacher have allowed me to experience the struggles that working people in this district face every day. I understand what it is like to work long hours only to feel forgotten about by the politicians in Washington who are supposed to be our representatives. This is the reason why I ran for Congress in 2012 and is the reason I continue to run for office today. Our district and our nation as a whole face a number of issues and the people of our district deserve to have a congressman in Washington who understands their struggles and will actually represent them rather than set their needs aside in favor of political gain. The economic recession in 2008 hit our district hard and although our economy has steadily recovered over time, there are still many economic issues at hand. The biggest issue is, of course, the higher unemployment rate. The unemployment rate of our district is 13%, which is still 8% higher than the national average. The fact that there are many hardworking people in our district who are unable to find work and help make our community prosper is unacceptable. The first thing we can do to create jobs in this district is invest in our infrastructure. Not only will investing in our infrastructure create thousands of jobs in the Inland Empire, it will improve our roads and schools, benefiting the entire community. The second thing we can do is come together to support our small businesses. Small businesses are the heart of our community, but all too often are driven out of business by large corporations. Let's make sure that anyone that has the courage and drive to start their own businesses and help create jobs in our district has the backing of the entire community. Finally, we need to further our efforts to combat veteran unemployment. The soldiers who are willing to sacrifice their lives to ensure our freedom deserve to return from duty knowing that their co commitment to their country has not gone unnoticed. We need to institute job programs for our veterans to ease their way back into civilian life and reward their duty for our nation. But what good is job security if you do not feel secure while out in public? Ever since tragedy struck San Bernardino in December, the people of this di district have not felt completely safe in public. There is no shame in that. People do not expect tragedy to ever strike so close to home and when it does, fear is a natural response. But we cannot let fear dictate our lives. There are simple solutions to help prevent mindless violence from occurring in public. We can start by imposing gun control legislation that makes it harder for criminals to get their hands on a weapon, but does not infringe upon the rights of a law-following citizen. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that when a politician like myself says we need simple gun control legislation, some people take that to mean we need to destroy every gun in America and remove the Second Amendment from the Constitution. Well, I can guarantee you that is not what we mean. What I, and many others, believe is that it should not be as easy as it is, as it is for someone to buy a deadly assault weapon and a ton of ammunition to go with it. We believe that we need to reform the background checks for buying a gun so that a person who should not have access to a gun cannot easily buy one. These are not radical beliefs. I think we can all come together to support gun control legislation that helps us make that helps make us feel safe in public but does not interfere with a law-abiding citizen's right to possess a gun. Now, I would like to shift to a different topic that I think is extremely important. The topic I am referring to is party polarization. All too often, we turn on the news only to hear about how Republicans and Democrats are fighting over a series of issues. The result of this fighting is gridlock, and little is actually accomplished to solve the issues that plague the common working man or woman. In his 1961 inaugural address, President Kennedy stated, United, there is little we cannot do in a host of cooperative ventures. Divided, there is little we can do. Fifty-five years later, this message still rings true. But politicians in Washington seem to have forgotten about this message. Party polarization has become so extreme over recent years that when a compromise is actually reached between the two parties, everyone is shocked. Why well, I think it is time to break this status quo. I believe our district should serve as an example for Washington to follow. With the number of issues at hand, it is easy to divide on the basis of race, sexuality, or religion, 
and to blame others. What is not easy to do, however, is to come together, understand that other people may have different beliefs than you do, and create solutions to the problems at hand. Although it is the harder option, I would choose uniting as one over dividing any day of the week because that is what politics is truly about. So let's work together to solve the issues facing our district and show Washington that Kennedy was right in saying that there is little we cannot do when we are united. Thank you for coming out.